To my YouTube listeners, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. It'll make a big difference for the Hasidic Story Project. This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. The wife of Reb Tzvi Kaminker was a very holy woman who had a special schut, a special merit. In those days, many women died in childbirth because the doctors in the little villages didn't know how to take care of these women. And everyone in the area knew that if the wife of the holy Rebbe, Reb Tzvi Kaminker, walked in when a woman was having birth, even if she was in pain and in danger, everything would be okay and the child would be born healthily and easily. Many years later, the Rebbe and his Rebetzin moved to Eretz Yisrael, to the land of Israel, and they were so poor, they could barely make a few pennies to buy challah for Shabbos. And the Rebetzin, who was a true tzedeket, a true righteous woman, she didn't want anyone to know about her holiness. And so she would secretly find out if there was a woman who was having pain while giving birth, and then she would just casually drop in to visit. But slowly, people began to notice that as soon as the Rebetzin dropped in, the pain would end and the baby would be born without any problems. And people wanted to pay her in order to be at childbirths, or even from the times when she just showed up voluntarily. But she would say, it had nothing to do with me. I was just walking by. I'm Baruch Hashem, I'm glad the baby was born healthy, but it didn't have anything to do with me. And she wouldn't accept any money. Now in those days, the land of Israel was under the rule of the Ottomans, the Turks. And so, in Jerusalem at the time, there was a pasha, a governor, who ruled over the whole land of Israel for the Ottomans. And one time, the pasha's daughter was having trouble giving birth, and the pasha was worried that she was about to die. He called in all the doctors, but they couldn't help her. And the pasha, being the pasha of Eretz Yisrael, he had many Jewish friends, and some of the Jewish friends said to the pasha, listen, don't waste your money on doctors that are not going to be able to help you. There's a holy woman here in Jerusalem, and if you can just get her to come here and visit your place, you won't need any doctors, and you'll have nothing to worry about. So the Pasha came personally to the broken-down home of Red Tzvi Kaminker and his holy Rebetzin, because he didn't want his daughter to die. And he knocks on the door, and he asks the Rebetzin to please come to his palace and save his daughter's life. Of course... There wasn't a question that she would come. And so she walked to the palace. And as soon as she walked in, the baby was born. And everyone was healthy. And the Pasha wanted to pay her money. And even though she was destitute and poor, she didn't want to take any money for that. And so the Pasha spoke with all of his Jewish friends. And he said, do me a favor. Talk with this woman. I want to give her a gift to show her my thanks. Find out what she wants. Obviously, she's not going to take money from me. Maybe there's something else that I can give her as the Pasha. Now, Marat HaMachpelah, the cave where Adam and Chava, the patriarchs, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and three of the matriarchs, Sarah, Rivka, and Leah, was taken over by the Muslims, who decreed that any Jew that entered the Marat HaMachpelah would be killed on the spot, because they believed that it would be a desecration of the holiness of the place, if a Jew stepped there. So the wife of Reb Tzvi Kaminker says to the Pasha, Okay, I understand you want to give me a gift. I want you to let me go into Marat HaMachpelah and pray at the graves of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Immediately the Pasha said, When do you want to go? And she said, In three months' time. Can you imagine? For hundreds of years, not a single Jew was allowed to enter into there or pray, and she was going to go in the name of all of the Jewish people. And she thought to herself, maybe I'm going to bring Mashiach. I have to turn over the whole world. And so she worked on herself, preparing for the day that she would enter into the cave of the patriarchs. And she was already a very holy woman to start with. But after all this work that she had done, 
she had reached an even higher level. This is a story, by the way, that was told by Reb Shlomo Karlbach. And Reb Shlomo said, you should know this is a true story, that he heard it in Babov. And it's a classic story that's in all of the Hasidic books. So back to our story. In the meantime, all of the doctors felt bad because with all of their importance, education and experience, they could not get the babies to come out and be healthy. And here this simple Jewish woman just walks in through the door and the baby is born and the mother is healthy. And the doctors were very jealous of her. And they heard that the Pasha had given her permission to go to Marat HaMachpelah. You know, if you go there these days, it's all cleaned up and it looks good. But in those days, it was just steps going down, 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 deep into a cave. And so the doctors went to the Muslim who was in charge of Marat HaMachpelah, and they said to him, you know, the Pasha only told her that she could go into the cave. He never said anything about coming out. And so they gave the guard a lot of money and made arrangements so that the Rebbitzin would go in, but not come out. And the day finally came, and the Rebbitzin showed up with a letter from the Pasha, giving her permission to enter into the cave. And she went in and began to go down the steps. till she got all the way down into the cave. And she started davening, and she davened for an hour, for two hours, for three hours. And then she felt that she had davened enough, and she went back up the stairs and tried to open the door, but everything was closed and dark, and she realized that she'd been locked in. She started crying and begging, Please, let me out! I can't be here anymore! But there was no answer, and she understood that they had closed her in on purpose and that nobody was going to open the door for her, and nobody cared that she was there. So what would you do in that situation? Probably the same thing that the Rebbitzin did. She went back down the steps and started praying again, saying to Hillem, saying Psalms. Now Reb Tzvi Kaminker was a direct descendant of King David, and he knew all of the names of all of his descendants, going from King David all the way to himself. And so his wife is stuck there in the dark, crying again and again, begging Hashem to get her out of there, feeling like she was just about to faint. And suddenly she sees a little light deep in the cave. And then the light comes closer to her, and she notices that it's a great light coming out of the crown of a man walking towards her. And the man approaches her, and he says, I want you to know, that I am the great, 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 great grandfather of your holy husband, Reb Tzvi Kaminker. I am Melech David. I am King David. Hashem allowed me to come back into this world because he heard your prayer. You sang to Hillem. You sang the words that I wrote, that I wrote from the deepest, most broken places in my heart. And you said my words from such a place of brokenness and humility that I've come here to help you. Come with me, and I'll show you the way out. Now the Rebbitzin, she was shocked to see Melech David standing in front of her, but she also had her wits about her. She said to him, I want you to give me something so that people will believe that you took me out of here. You know, I'm going to come out, and I'll say that King David took me out, and everyone's going to think I'm crazy. So King David, he gave her a little book of Psalms, a little book of Tehillim, and then they walked together, and he showed her a door. It was a different door than the one that she had entered from. It was a door somewhere deep in the cave. And he opens the door. And she walks out. But she didn't walk out in Hebron, where Ma'arat HaMachpelah is. He opened the door, and when she walked out, she was standing right in front of her own home in Jerusalem. But she looked at her hand, and she still had the tiny book of Psalms that King David had given her. And this little Tehillim, this little psalm book, was handed down from generation to generation. And it said in Babov that someone once came to visit the Sansa Rebbe, and he had this book of Tehillim with him. He showed it to the Rebbe, and he said, I want you to know that I have this book because I am one of the great grandchildren of the holy Reb Tzvi Kaminker and his holy Rebbitzin who got this book directly from King David himself.
I would like to thank Shia Green and family for becoming new supporters of this podcast. If you'd like to become a supporter of this podcast, you can go to my website, HasidicStory.com, H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. And there you'll see there's a link to become a supporter. All support is greatly appreciated and not just financial. Your listening is greatly appreciated and leaving a review is appreciated and sharing it with your friends is appreciated. So thank you, everyone, the supporters, the listeners, and everyone that's a part of this project. Thank you so much.